Good evening and welcome to our, I think we're about our 50th edition of Certified Unscripted. Thank you for joining us tonight. We appreciate having you here. And I know we just jumped in without our intro, but hey, here we are, you know? Anyway, I just want to thank y'all for joining us and being a part of the segments that we have. You know, as the month goes on, we're actually getting ready to um, go into a hiatus going into November. But before we do that, we will have a number of some of your favorite um, ball players on and just some interesting topics to discuss. So I am not this great uh, host but I do my best and I just appreciate the opportunity to learn every day. And so with that said, I'm gonna bring in some of my experts in terms of people that know what they're absolutely doing. So first off and foremost, I'm gonna bring in our GM, Penny Toller. Penny, 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 what what, what can I say, girl? You know, <laughs> if it's not it's one, always good to see you. another thing, but hey, <laughs> you gotta keep it moving, gotta keep it moving, I'm here. And that's why we got the name Certified Unscripted. But you know, it's going to be an amazing show. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Hey, we got one of my favorite players on, Janice Lawrence. And hey, I'm here. Let's get it. Let's get it started. Let's get this party right, started. Let's, let's bring Ruthie in and see what she's up to right now. Because I think she's somewhere in the airport, to be yeah, honest. I'm in, so. I'm, in, I'm in Atlanta. I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. What? Sitting here trying to, trying to find a spot. Uh, just got back from Michigan. Hey, I'm excited to be here. Good to see y'all faces. And uh, yeah, good to see my girl, my Mississippi girl, Janet Lawrence. And that's going to be good to catch up on what she's all about, what she's been doing. And uh, so, yes, yeah, exciting. Good to see you, Rita, Penny. Hey, hey great to see you, Ruthie. I haven't seen you hey, forever, girl. I, I, I know. Just, I've been missing. I, listen, I'll be thinking about you. I'm serious. I'm, I'm trying to. But I, but true, trust and know that even from my own here, I'm doing something productive. I'm, I'm planting seeds. So, but I'll be thinking about y'all. Oh, that's what's up. Awesome. So, so let me ask you a question. Like, how, how have y'all been kind of managing things without the WNBA? I mean, you know, I'm so used to the noise and the, the energy behind that. It's just so, it's kind of unusual now not to be watching well, 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 you know, I'm going to answer that first. I've been trying to get hold of Kelsey, Chelsea, uh, Penny. Can you get her? Right? Chelsea. Come on, can, can you, you at least me? she texts me. <laughs> yeah, hey, listen. She's been on vacation, though. You know, she's know, been on, I, I saw I, on her Instagram she was on vacation. Yeah, and I know they've been on the national team, too. Yeah, but just, you know, I don't even have a, just just give her my love. Say, hey, you got, I, I just, I haven't had a chance to send her a message. So I've been, you know, and I've been sort of sending to Natalie Williams and Nikki. But no, I've been, uh, I've been, I've been, I've been, I still been on, like, I've been, I, like, I won a championship, and I'm so proud of them and Chelsea and stuff like that. So anyway, that's, uh, but it's, you know, it's good. I think, you know, we're moving on. These girls are amazing. They, they're getting ready. I think they went for the, to the cup, didn't they? The national team, they went straight to the cup. Something yeah, down. they go straight to the numbers. They don't have to do no more qualifications and nothing like that. But they I just had the, they had a cup, though. Penny, they played. It's a cup with uh, they was going on as right after the championship. But I don't know if those girls from Vegas went. You know, the USA, I, I thought I read somewhere where they won. I know the Chelsea year. was on vacation. You know, I knew Chelsea yeah. went on vacation. Well, maybe she didn't go. Maybe they just took a few. Because they won the first game without the really big wigs, but. But no, nah, but I'm, I'm sure they need a break physically and mentally from basketball. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. And to celebrate. You just won a championship. You know, I talked to Chelsea briefly after um she won her championship. We were talking via text, and it was funny because she said, Penny, I just want to thank you for bringing me to L.A. I said, girl, I want to thank you for bringing a championship to L.A. You know, I know that's right. One of the nicest, sweetest players you're ever going to meet in your life. Yep. She really, yeah, she is. She really is. Mm -hmm. And I'm so, you know, we're, we're just going to anticipate having her on the show down down the line. Yes. Hopefully, before uh, we leave for our hiatus in November, we can get her in here and John Quill Jones and a couple other players, you know, which would be great. But you know, who else, Vita, we got to get on and not it? the whole of the show. It no. was funny, I was having dinner with um Elena Beard the other night. Uh, oh, Elena yeah, was in LA. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's in LA. And she's like, Penny, you better. She was here one week and I was busy. And then she called me and she said, Penny told, I don't care where you at. You better come meet with me. <laughs> Elena's doing a lot of great things. And we sat down. Oh my God. You know, I felt like, a, even though Elena's, you know, my, you know I'm, I'm, I'm still older than them and don't work with all them. I'm right. so proud of all the work she's doing with potentially bringing a team to, Oak, you know, to Oakland. And Elena right. got a lot of great stuff going on. She would be great to be on the show. And I just love sitting down with my players and when they text me out of the blue and 
you know, it's like old time, and you know, it took us a half an hour to laugh about all the crazy stuff uh -huh. we used to do. <laughs> but Elena is definitely, you know, you shouldn't have any faves, but she's one of my faves, and um, she's doing amazing things. And I think a lot of people want to hear what she's doing outside. Exactly. Oh, we're, we're we're definitely gonna have her on, you know. Since you have all those numbers, we're definitely going to bring it. <laughs> yeah, I'm a blackmail. I'm going to try to blackmail Chelsea. I'm like, Chelsea, we need you on the show. Come on over here. Yeah, I don't think I have to twist yeah. too much. Just need to find time the which time, is free. Your time, boy. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, we have a, a special young lady in the house that has been requested over and over and over again. I mean... I've had so many emails and so many texts regarding her that there was no way I wasn't going to try and get her. But the thing is, I would call her, I'd text her, and when she called me back, no. <laughs> but finally, she did, what, about two weeks ago, three weeks ago, saying, you know, apologizing. I'm so sorry. I've been so busy, but... You know, I will come on the show after I do a few things. And so this week we are honored to have Miss Janice Lawrence. Give it up. Give it up for Thank you, Janice. Hey, Janice. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank welcome. You all. It's, it's so good to have you. I'm excited to be here. And I'm Janice, here. I want to say I don't miss the last couple of shows, but I'm going to tell you, you always been one of my favorites. And they'll tell you, I'm always talking you up, I'm huh, Ruthie? Uh -huh, I, I was not missing this show. I just told some people over in this club, hey, y'all on your own, tear it down. I got to get over here because we got one of the greatest players ever, you guys. Ever. 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 You she may not say that. Everybody knows, no offense or to anybody, the Lisa Leslie's and all these people, but Jen has been doing that since, uh -huh. since forever. Yep, yep. She you know sure what I'm saying? Is. Forever. You just, you all are just way too kind. Thank you so much. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> but we're truthful. No, we're we we're all honest about our thoughts. We all kind of like we were all in this together, so that was the good thing about it. So. For those of you know those younger kids who are you know everybody want to have the debate about who's the goat, we can go back to some of those players that these girls don't even know and say, well, hey, do you know about? And they wouldn't have any idea about who we're talking about. Right, you're you're so right, you know, and that's why you know it's important that we bring you on. It's important we bring other players on because you know I don't really think they understand the magnitude of things, especially with the WNBA being 25 years plus in. Um, it's more like oh, there wasn't anything before the WNBA, but you know your story and other players' story is totally different because it's at a point in time where the prominence of the game wasn't matching up with the level of players that were actually playing at that time. The opportunities weren't there. So, you know, we're going to um, start a little bit in, in conversation with you about maybe that point in time in that era, because there are a number of people that come on followers that just don't really understand all the things that happened back, back then and there, you know? But I also want to say this too, Vita and Janet, you can answer this question. And this is where it's clearly a loss. Like everybody now, when you think of college women basketball, they always think of Connecticut and they always think of Tennessee. But way before that, there was Louisiana Tech. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's right. I thought that, Janice, and you're in college because you guys dominated for like a long, long time. We did. We were fortunate to um, have good players. We had good coaches, but we had good players. And everybody, you know, everybody fed into – it wasn't about one person. It was about the team. And so it didn't matter who scored. It didn't matter who rebound. It mattered that we won. And um, we had – before I went to Louisiana Tech, to be honest with you, I didn't know anything about Louisiana Tech. But I went on a visit and um, – I'm originally from Loosedale, Mississippi. Ruthie, no, she's right down the road. We're from small places. Uh -huh. 20, 20 miles. <laughs> and so when I went there, it's a small place and um, it just felt like home. And the players that they had there, they were the foundation. They brought in myself, Deborah Rodman. I mean, yes. you know, you had Lori Scott, you had Angela Turner, you had Pam Kelly. 
I mean, you know, that's a name. I got beat up every day to learn lessons. They had this big girl named Tia Sossman. Oh my gosh, you know, I went in soaking wet. I may have weighed a hundred pounds. These girls, look, I got beat on every day. But the good point about that is that when I first went there, you know, you sit there, you'd be like, oh, okay, I'm an All-American coach that you'll come here. I'm not going to tell you you're going to start. Right. We had to earn everything that we did. Yes. But we had players who were there before us that we could learn from. In my first year, you could take the first five out and put in the second five and still not miss a beat. Okay. We were just that talented and we were just that good. Wow, that's a, a blessing. For those of you who are a little younger and might not know, uh, Miss Lawrence was a two-time All-American when she was at La Tech. I believe it was two times. It might have been three, I think, actually. But she led um, La Tech to a record of 130 and six in her four years of playing. Can you imagine 130 games and six losses? in that whole entire time when she was there. Like Penny said, you know, you had the dominance, you have the dominance of a Connecticut and teams like that. But before those teams, you had great dynasties as well in a lot tech. You know, and, and actually it was a time when the AIAW was still around. So you won a championship in the final year of the AIAW. And then you came back in the first year of the NCAA La Tech was the champion. So there's a little history for all of you who don't know much um, about La Tech back in the day or some of the dynasties that existed. But Ms. Lawrence right here, she, she was the one who made it happen for him. Yeah, well, who were I mean, some oh, of the great, oh, I'm sorry. I was gonna ask you, who were some of the great other players that you played against? I know I can name them, but who was probably one of the great names that you had to play against? Oh my gosh. Oh, there were, I mean, there were, there were so many, I mean, there were so many that people probably wouldn't even recognize. I mean, playing against, you know, played against Ruthie. I played against um, Lisa Ingram, Latanya Pollard, uh, Doris Walker, Valerie Steele, Amber Lloyd, Alicia Scott, uh, Janet Harris, um, Cooper. Cheryl too, didn't you, Cheryl Miller? I think you... You played, you know, played against her, played with her on the national teams. Yeah. So, I mean, there are just so many. I mean, there are so many people that we, I mean, I can remember Georgina Wells. People may not yes, even know. Who she, yes. yes. This girl, arms for days. And back in the day before Duncan was girls' thing, she could dunk. You know, she is the that. person. That's a tribute question for you people out there. I room with her on the national team one year. George Ann Wells is the first person to dunk in a college game. And she played for, what was it, West Virginia, I believe it was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot about George Ann. Yes. Oh, gosh. And I mean, you know, just the other day, I was, you know, you, do you remember Cheryl Cook? Cookie? Yes. Mm hmm. Trying to get on the show. I'm like, where are you? She was like, oh, I'm in, she's down the road. And I'm like, how have I not seen you? And we live, don't we live close together? Yes, so, I mean, yes. so many good. I mean, I played against Ann Donovan. Yeah. You know, Medina you know, Dixon. Medina Dixon. Yeah. Medina Dixon. Oh my God. Medina. Mm, I mean, yes, Medina Dixon. I mean, I can go on and on and just list after list after list. And I mean, just players that people would be like, who is she even talking about? But we would know them because we were in that same age group. Right. right. You know, so so let's let's start back at the beginning, because there's a lot of people that don't know the beginning. You're from a place called Lucidale, Mississippi. Correct? Lucille, Mississippi. Lucille, Mississippi. All right. Well, yeah. talk, to us, okay. talk to us about Lucidale, your family, that time, you know, you're coming up and just what was going on during that time people just don't know about. Well, as I said, Ruthie and I know, you know, we're from small towns. Ruthie is from um, McLean. Uh-huh. Right down the street. You know, I've known Ruthie 
forever. We played against each other in high school and, you know, it, it just went on from there. When she was in college, played against her. Uh, I'm back in a time when it took a village to raise a child. And I was that child from that village. Right. Um, right. So, you know, back then, everyone had carte blanche. If you acted up, they can, you know, tear it up or they can... Yeah. You know, if you know whoever they talk to at your family, whoever gets there first, they get a yeah. piece too. And yeah. so, uh, so, you know, so I was that child that you know everybody had a hand in raising. And um, I can remember you went back then. You go to school when you start out in kindergarten. You end up going to high school with these same people, exactly. and then to high school it kind of feeds in from the other communities. And I can remember, I never went on a date because those kids, those guys that I grew up with, they would tell people that they couldn't date me. So, because I was going somewhere, they had enough faith to think that I was going to be good enough to be able to do what I wanted to do, to be able to go to college and to be able to, as they say, go somewhere. So, that was a time when anybody older than you, they were always right. The teachers were always right. And mm -hmm. you could not say that a grown person wasn't telling the truth. Right. Mm -hmm. so, always respect. Uh, How did you oh. get into basketball then? If you know, oh, girl, how did look. you start yeah. playing basketball in, the, in your town? How did I start playing basketball? Okay. I had a lot of cousins and I had a lot of male cousins. And so um, mm -hmm. they were playing and okay. I couldn't play. So, I mean, I was the disruptive child. So I would stand on <laughs> the floor. <laughs> oh, I was just going to ask if your family was now involved. You see, it always starts, starts with the family. family you know? yeah, I was disruptive. And so the, they thought, and they got me, they were smarter than I was. They were like, well, okay, if we put her on a team, we can get her off the floor, right? Oh, okay, it worked. But then, you know, they started letting me play a little bit. And then, you know, you'd be like, oh, wait a minute, I can do this. And, you know, and you start kind of honing your game. That's how we all started honing our games by playing with the guys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that's pretty much how it started. Um, they were out there playing. I felt like I could play too, even though, I wasn't. I wasn't good. I couldn't play, but um, that's how I learned. That's how I learned. Yeah, you know, I stuck with it, and um, you know, was able to um, learn some things. And you know, then I ended up having going to you know elementary school, and you having different coaches trying to help you, you know, you know, with your skills and that type of thing. So, but that's basically how it started. Right. So, I mean, in your, in your high school years, you were a tremendous player. Was there that one person that really pushed you and said, you know, they have things called scholarships. Maybe you didn't have too many of them back then uh, because of the time where it was. But, you know, there's a possibility you can, you know, move forward into a, another realm with this. Um. I would probably be amiss and say if I say no that there wasn't because I can always say there's I always had support from and it it couldn't have just been my little my little world. I'm sure Ruthie and I'm sure you as well, Penny, you had your community that surrounded you and pushed you and whenever you played, everybody came out. I mean, so I just think that people believe that I could. And I didn't know any different that I couldn't. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so uh, I just I just had I had uh, the community behind me, and I had coaches who believed in me. And um, you know, yeah, I think everybody, as far as my family, my uncles, my aunts, my mother. Uh, my they all they all were basketball players, so I kind of think that it was may have been in my blood somewhere along the way. Absolutely, so, it's in the DNA. It was in the DNA. Yeah, so how now, did you hone your skills? Because you know what, being tall, you know how I hate when coaches um, make tall people not be able to handle the ball because your skills are well rounded and you are good at everything. You know what Absolutely. I'm saying? And I used to love your turnaround. You know how Scotty had that off the backboard? 
You were the first yeah. person that I saw that, I mean, you were just smooth, straight up. Like, you would turn and then go off the blackboard and, and, and go switch. How did you homework all your skills? Because you know how they usually try to box tall people in a box, but you can handle the ball, you can shoot, you can move. How did you homework your skills, though? Um, You know, I don't, it was from a lot of practice, but I guess the one thing I can say is that I did a little bit of everything when I was growing up. I mean, my mother never told me I couldn't. And I guess I never, you know, I, I, it was up to me to decide whether I could or I couldn't. And I ended up just doing a lot of things. I, my senior year of high school, I had to decide if I was going to stop playing basketball and continue with the high jump uh, to go to the district. So, I did a little bit of everything that was available. So mm -hmm. I, I did that. But uh, I mean, practicing. Um, and after high school, I ended up playing AAU basketball. So anybody who's played AAU basketball, you already know what's, what's that's, you know, how, what that's like. A whole mm -hmm. bunch of practice um, and just repetition. Mm -hmm. And I, I think back at that time, also, it was it was kind of natural. Once basketball was finished, you move into volleyball or you move into track. Um, you just kind of kept going with the flow of things. Unlike now, I think so many players, when they come out of high school or they're finishing up high school, they're very focused. Like, I got to get to AU. I got to get my skills together, so on and so forth. So my question to you is at that time, you know, you didn't have social media. You didn't have everything uh, that we have now in terms of advertising yourself, but you had your state tournament. Did you win your state tournament in your high school years no. where uh, coaches could focus on you? Because that was probably the only place they really knew about you. No, I didn't. Harrison Central, Eugenia Connors. <laughs> Van Chancellor, they got us. So no, I didn't win that, but I did get, you know, I did go to the all-star game that they always had in Jackson. Um, but I remember Sandra Hogue, who was a co-head coach at Louisiana Tech, she came down to see me play. Okay. And, okay. you know, back in the day, it didn't get that cold down south. Right. And so everybody's, you know, we're out there playing a game, and I can remember this like it was yesterday. Here comes this little four foot nothing lady wearing six inch heels with a fur coat, you know, <laughs> down here. She sashayed in, and everybody is looking at her like, who is this? Who is this lady? You know, Miss Miss Hogue never met a stranger. Miss Hogue was always front and center, and um, you know, so. I don't, I, I don't know how people heard of me, but I did get a lot of offers to go, and I think I could have gone anywhere I wanted to, you know. So, so I don't know how they found out about me. To be honest yeah. with you, I don't. Know. Because back then the process was so different. I mean, you had teams. You didn't have a lot of colleges that even had scholarships at the time. You know, maybe you had two or three scholarships, and you had to split them up and get a partial. You know, for half your 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 um, season there. But I know, you know, state tournaments always seem to be the focal point. Even when I was recruiting, it's like, all right, we got to go to state tournament because there you could see everybody that was about it and doing things. You know? I think the Juan one thing got a question for. Oh, I'm sorry, Janice. I didn't mean to cut you off, but I thought that was an interesting question that Ron Ron Charles had about, I guess, 82 83. You guys went to the championship game against USC. We did. Oh, you must didn't win. Is that what? Trying to cause drama. Yes, we did. <laughs> That's Ron Ron. I didn't know if y'all won or lost. Yes, we lost. Um, um, they My they God, were that's right. You played against the twins then too. Played against the twins. Played with the you know yeah. Played against them with Cheryl and with Rhonda and Coop oh, and Coop. Okay. So they had a stacked team and um they yeah, had a they good had a team. They they had a lot of players. They had a good team. Um and and they beat us. I mean they won. So um, they were they were good, and yes, that did happen. But we don't have to talk about it, do we? 
<laughs> There's your answer, Ron Ron. I didn't know who won the game or not, but I was like, yeah. let me get at least one of your questions up there. Yeah, we, we have a lot of questions coming in, so I'm gonna I'm put some of them up actually. Uh, in terms of y'all keep talking, but let me let me get well, I tell you this, Janice. That another lot of people don't know, I believe someone had it on here. There wouldn't be no WNBA without you guys. The other thing they wouldn't be is overseas because you guys led the charge overseas too playing great basketball which opened the doors for players of my era to you know to come right in i played with deborah that was my first um uh, rodman that was my first um teammate when i got to italy and i didn't even know dennis robin had a sister until i got there and, and she was there because you guys opened that door up and because you guys are so good it, it it allowed us to come through what was it like when you went overseas you know what? I was fortunate. You know, um, the only reason I ended up going overseas is because Lynette Woodard said, what are you doing? I was like, uh, I don't know. She said, well, why don't you come over? Why don't you go to Italy just for a year and try it? OK, I wanted to travel. OK, fine. I'll go for a year. And what people don't get is all all Americans went to Italy. Mm. All the all Americans went to Italy. That was the place to go. It seemed like there wasn't any other place that I can remember that more Americans went to at that particular time. The games that were, I mean, the fans were fantastic because they would pack these little gyms. I mean, standing room only. I mean, it was crazy. People don't get it. They think that they have good fans where they go to, where, you know, where they have college basketball and WNBA. You haven't seen anything like it until you go to until you go overseas. They, I'm gonna speak for me, and I think the majority of the people who stayed there for long periods of time in certain places, they treat you like you are the, like you the first slice, first piece of sliced bread. They love you. <laughs> they love you. They did. Yes. Yeah, I was I was in one place for nine years. I was in Vicenza, Italy. They mm -hmm. treated me. That was like my. That was just like my second home. We won so many national championships, European championships, and Italian championships. We killed it. We killed it. The first probably four or five years, we won everything. Well, and I mean, we had a question here from Hoop Scoop. She said, Janice, they asked Shara Miller her all-time favorite players, and she she said, named you as the one. Talk about playing with Cheryl and against her. I mean, what made her so great? And that's a great compliment, by the way. Well, thank you. I didn't even know that. But the thing about Cheryl, Cheryl was a competitor. And I can say that about all of us. Because I think in that era, we were so competitive and it wasn't about the money because yeah. we weren't getting paid like people are getting paid now. It was about the competitiveness. It was about saying, yeah, oh, well, we won. You know, well, we beat that person. Are you just honing your skills? Cheryl was such a competitor. And what's so sad is that she didn't get a chance to play in the WNBA because of her injuries. Um, but what you saw when you saw her in college, that was that competitiveness. She was skilled. Uh, she was knowledgeable about the game. She got her teammates involved. Uh, she wasn't a selfish player. Um, she embodied what we what we went through as far as basketball. Okay. Uh, and I think she was like some of that that evolution too, like that bridge to that next to that next generation that was coming after. Oh, oh, for sure. Had she been able to play in the WNBA, it would have. I think it would have changed some things because she would have been because she's over six feet tall. She would have been that point guard. She could have played every position that there was. Mm -hmm. And so, she's an entertainer. And <laughs> at that time, that Kobe, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Could have been like Kobe. If you had to, you know, say what guy was she? I think she would have been like that Kobe, that Kobe girl. Kobe girl. Okay. All right. Kobe girl. Well, Melissa wants to know about your uh, 1984 USA team. 
uh, game in LA. She said it was awesome. You played for Pat Summit. Um, she give you that stare back. She wants to know what's up with that. What did you learn from her? Um, <laughs> be honest, we're unscripted. You can say anything you want to say. Good or what bad. I <laughs> what I learned is I don't think Pat, I don't think Pat Summit really liked late Louisiana Tech players at that particular time. Um, um, probably not. but uh, yeah, probably not because we did beat them several times. Yeah, um, that's why I say your team was legendary. Yeah, so um, but what I learned from Pat is Pat expected you to give 100 percent all the time. It was never any there, there's not any time that you rest there. She wants you to she wanted you to be perfect no matter what you did. And uh, it was always going to be Pat's way. Um, there was no deviation. Um, it didn't matter what you learned, how you learned it. I'm telling you, Pat was just Pat. I can remember. <laughs> I can remember. <laughs> I asked her about it like 20 years after the fact. Mm -hmm. And she, we were doing this drill where you mm -hmm. overplay it, you're at the top of the key, you got somebody on the wing. And so you're overplaying. So the, they threw the ball to the, to the point, I turn around and I grab the ball and I'm going down for a layup. She calls my name. She was like, Janice Lawrence. I know that you didn't learn that from Leon Bormore. I'm like, <laughs> I was like, yes, I did. You, I mean, and, and I was like, oh, okay, maybe that was the wrong answer. But <laughs> that, that wanted it done her way and no other way. Uh -huh. But she always wanted, she always wanted you to do your best and to give your best. So. Right. Yeah, that's what she wanted. Well, look, you know, Monty Williams brings up the fact that that's probably why she was mad because in 81, <laughs> you know, you beat him by 20 yeah, points. Right there. <laughs> it went 30 points. Oh, yeah, point. so she, she probably had a little point. chip on her shoulder anyway. Yeah, maybe a little bit. Yeah, he wants to know, you know, how you stay focused every game during that time when uh, y'all were really dominating. And were you the first team to go undefeated on the championship? I don't know. That's something I don't even know. Um, yes, I think we were. Well, I don't know. I can't say that. Because, you know, UConn has had some teams. I know, Tennessee but that's has, after you guys. Before us, we were probably we probably were. It wasn't hard to not stay focused with Leon Bormore because if you weren't focused – you got a chance to come to the bench. Nobody wanted to come to the bench. So, look, if you want to stay on the floor, you stay focused and, you know, play the game the way it was supposed to be played. So it wasn't that hard. You know, people forget we didn't have any of the distractions like they have. I don't know if I can say distractions. We didn't have social media. We didn't have um, somebody saying, oh, well, what is that person going to do tonight? We were just that team. And wow. our goal was to go out and win. It didn't matter how many points. I can remember, look, Deborah Rodman. Deborah Rodman was a special type of player. Mm -hmm. She'd be like, oh, Janice, don't worry about the rebounds. I got it. And guess what? <laughs> she had them. She had them. She was like, you do what you do. I got this. And uh, you couldn't ask for somebody. If it was a rebound, she could get it. I mean, she was just so talented. Look, Dennis Dennis learned from Deborah. Yeah. Deborah did. Okay. Dennis. Wow. So, yeah. So, yeah. That's Still waiting right into that. What do you think about today's basketball? You know, what do you think about um, these players or the game itself? Well, I think the game is a lot different. I worry sometimes, and this is just my opinion. I worry. And I want to ask sometimes, what is is your brand more important than your game? Is your game suffering because of your brand? Right. You don't have to worry about your brand. We were Lady Textures. That's all. That we were. We were Lady Textures. 
It didn't, you know, we weren't sitting there saying, oh, well, so-and-so got this and so-and-so got that. I'm going to have to do this in order for people to look at me. We mm -hmm. thought we had to go out and win a game for people to look at us. Right. It was you know, a unit. Yeah. Right. right. That was the most important thing. And that's what I think back then made teams what they were. It wasn't about, oh, Nike is going to pick you, pick us up. Or, mm -hmm. oh, you know, somebody else is going to sponsor us. Right. We were right. just Lady Textures. That's all we were. You know, you didn't have the distractions that you have now. And oh, no. I think too much organized basketball, like I think players, obviously evolution players have gotten, you know, faster and all those things. But I think evolution, I think that um, too much organized basketball has made a lot of people soft. You know, like where when we wanted to get in the game, we got to go to the street and play. You know what I'm saying? It made you like I, Yes. Uh, you know, I don't know if I can say it's more organized, but I think that Everyone that I played against, played with, wanted to be the best. They wanted to be their best. And it didn't matter. We were just so competitive um, that it was like, hey, you know, you get a bunch of us together. Our team is going to beat your team. You know, that's just the, that's the attitude that we had. Mm -hmm. And I don't I don't I, I don't. I don't know if I can say it's organized basketball. Oh, because yeah. The only reason I said that, because you know how, like, now everybody, and I'm not saying anything's wrong with it, but I do get, like, you now everybody wants to be on an AAU team or, or you know, be on an organized team where I know the thing I loved about basketball was just going out and playing street basketball. Right. And, and, I, I, and, and I think that's where you were challenged the most because you played against the guys. There weren't a lot of women out right. there playing. That's where you really learned playing against the guys. You did. I mean, and then like, and just like Penny just said, if you lose you out, you always wanted to play because if you, how many people are out there that you may not be able to get back on? That's right. Yeah. Everybody so ain't getting the trophy. <laughs> right. <laughs> Hey, look, back part. in the day, you for those people who don't know, you didn't get a participation trophy. There you go. You won, you got a trophy. You lost, you get to look at them get a trophy. So <laughs> it wasn't a participation thing. Yeah, everybody participated, but I think that it's made us a group of people be like, oh, well, I got a trophy because I participated. Yeah. No, I got I won. That's what I want. I don't, right. you know. Must participation. When you, you walk know, in the house and see those it, trophies, it, you knew they earned them. You know what I want to see the league do? And this is the one thing I want to see the league do. And Dennis, you will probably agree with this too, and all you people on here today. The league needs to show the history of what I mean. They should go back and show the original team. Because Janet, a lot of people who didn't see the original team, your team was loaded in Cleveland. With oh, you... Yeah. Isabella Fizikauchi, um, Rusha Brown, who we had on here, to uh, Michelle Edwards, yep. Raz yeah. Hopper. I forget oh, that, was, that was a squad name. back then, definitely. We should have won that first year. Yeah, you guys we were loaded. We had so much talent. We had so much talent. We should have won that year. We should have. But, you know, I can tell you that um, – there were a lot of girls who um, weren't able to come back and be able to be part of the WNBA. And I was fortunate. I was coming toward the end of my career and I was able to come back and play and to be able to come back and be able to be a part of that. There's no words to describe it because it was the first year. And I can say I've been on the, you know, I've been on it where I've been the first of a lot of things. I was the, you know, I played in the last AIAW mm -hmm. championship. Yep. I played in the first NCAA championship, and I was able to be in the first in the uh, in the WNBA. So I can't ask for no more than the things that I've been able to do with basketball. Wow. Look at that team! I'm glad Dion put that up. And oh yes, my God, I forgot about Lynette and it's Nim Koba. The name is spelled well, a little incorrect there. That was on your team. I mean, look how good you guys were. 
And Dan Hughes was your coach. You wind up winning it yeah. with the Seattle well, School. Yeah. yeah, because, well, now the first year, it was Linda Hill McDonald. Yeah, that's coach. right. Linda Hill was there. Oh, I forgot year. about her. Yeah. yeah. Linda Hill McDonald was the coach that first year. So, yeah, we were deep. Well, Susie wasn't there that first year. Um, Michelle was our, I think Michelle was our point guard. And we had Lynette, we had Ava, we had Iza. Um, what was Grasshopper's name? I know we called her Grasshopper because she jumped so high. Um, and she was unknown, but played so well for you guys. That Malachia she came Jones. Yeah, Malakia Jones, that's it. Malakia Jones. Oh, yes, Malakia. But Lake wasn't on the first. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think Lake was there the first year. Oh, was it? Okay. But I know she came in balling too. Yeah. But yeah, we, I mean, we've had so many good players come through with the Rockers. Um, everybody still, I run into people and you would think that it's been that long that people would not even remember me. They'd be like, oh, Janice. And I'm saying like, okay, what? How do you even know who I am? And they're like, oh yeah, you look the same. When are y'all gonna bring back the rockers? <laughs> and I'm sitting there like, okay, I don't think it's as simple as hold on a second, we're gonna bring them right on back in and we're gonna, you know, start where and people want we I know that Cleveland is probably not gonna be one of those teams that they are looking at bringing a team back, but it would be great for them to be able to spread it around and get you know more teams involved in. You know, I know Elena Beard, I heard you all speaking about it. I know she's trying to get teams, um, but to have some of those players who were involved in those first teams be able to come back and be a part of something, that would be great. Absolutely. Absolutely. We had a question by um, Ms. Danielle Burke. She said, you know, you played your last se three seasons in the WNBA. Um what do you think about it in terms of how you played and how much your game, how much of your game had you lost by then? Well, it's a lot different when you're playing at 20 something than when you're playing at, I think my last game, I was playing into my late thirties. So it was a big difference. I could tell, um, I could tell that I had lost a step depending on what I was doing. Right. Um, right. Um, but um, in the, the way we practice, you would think I remember Robin Roberts came and she was like, we were out there practicing like um, we didn't even have a game that night. And Robin was like, do y'all have a game tonight? I'm like, girl, you don't even know, right? We practicing. I mean, we're practicing harder than we probably playing. And I mean, it just takes a toll because I was still going back playing in Italy in the winter, in the fall, in the winter. So we played in the summer and we'll still go back overseas and play. So it just took a toll on my legs and that's, that's what happened. But you yeah. find out, you find out that basketball, men and women will tell you it's a young person sport. Right. Right. I was going to ask you how your knees are now. Like after all that wear and tear and back and forth. You know what? I have no pains. Oh, that's dope. I've oh, never that's been, dope. I've never been, I've never had any surgeries, never been seriously hurt, but I have no aches, no pains. I'm good. Okay. okay. So, you know, I've had, I've had so many people on, um, in my emails on the show and they always talk about the cookie monster. <laughs> so, um, she hopefully will be able to come on the show once she gets her schedule situated. We, we finally connected and we look forward to having her. But, you know, tell us a little bit about her in relationship to your relationship of playing with her and actually knowing her. Cheryl Cook? Uh, Cookie Monster. You Who know, are you all calling yeah. Cookie Monster? You don't know what to go. All right, let me find, let me find this thing right here. They said you play with her. And um, I think they were calling Cheryl Cook the Cookie Monster. No. Well, yeah, Cheryl. Yeah, Cheryl Cook. Well, see, we always just called her Cookie. Oh, okay. Um, uh, Cheryl, she was. Here it she is, was, right here. Hoop, Hoops Nation had that question. Cheryl, Cheryl was. Um, she was. A, she's a guard. She was quick. She could play defense. 
She was a good ball handler. Uh, she was a communicator. Um, playing with her, I mean, it's just like playing with, you know, your best point guards. She was good at what she did. Cheryl would have been on. <laughs> Cheryl would have been on the national team that year, and I'm sure you should ask Cheryl why Cheryl wasn't on that national team. Okay. But okay. Um, the one thing that I can always <laughs> tell you is. Cheryl always had a smile. She always had a smile. And she still has that same smile. I see her on Facebook. And um, she, I mean, a good person. She always has that smile, but a great player. All right. Well, well they're going to they gonna come after me if I don't put on what this people, show, girl. <laughs> what, people, what, what people don't understand is mm -hmm. everybody. From back in that day, were great players. Okay. Yeah, great. Yeah, you know, if if I can't sit here and tell you, if you say if you were to pull out a name, I was like, yeah, great player. I mean, you know, you, you, I mean, it's not like, you know, as time went on, you'd be you you sit and look at some players and you'd be like, mm, they need to do some work. Mm, why they don't? <laughs> why they not doing that? You know, why they not yeah. doing this? Mm -hmm. Doing that back then. All of those players were great players, but they were great players because they put in the work. They didn't have the social media to have somebody, you know, pumping you up. You had to pump yourself up because if not, somebody was ready to take your place. Absolutely. Because Absolutely. Lisa Ingram was a great player, too. That I ran oh my into God. overseas that I uh, didn't know. I mean, oh. you're not gonna find no. I mean, her three point shot, the way she handled the oh ball, my. and you know, you know, Janice, her passes. <laughs> oh my God, her passes, girl. Yes, and the thing about it is, if you were to look at Lisa, you'd be like, mm, "Ain't no, no way she can ball like that." Yeah, no really. <laughs> the way she look, Lisa, she had the passes. She had, I mean, she had the three pointer, and we're not gonna say that she was the swiftest. We're not going to say that, you know, she would get the lines done when Pat was out there running us to death. Uh, but I can tell you what, you're not going to find another player like her. Absolutely. At all. And I ran into her overseas because, you know, like you say, no social media, no television. And I'm not going to lie to you, when I ran her overseas, when I saw how good she because you know, if, if you're right, because if you look at it, you'd be like, it's no, okay, well, she can't be doing all that. And Lisa, you're right. Then you, yeah, she play when you meet her after you see her. Oh, and had swag for days. Lisa had swag. You Lisa know, had Look, y'all don't know nothing about Lisa Ingram. You just don't know. Lisa, look, you don't know nothing about her. She was, I mean, but you know what, Penny? If you were to look at all the players that we talk about, all of them were different. And there was something different about each and every one of them. Yes. But they were so good at what they did. You Honestly. know who I wish I had got a chance to see play and I didn't? Who's you know, that? I've seen film of this player and I never have. And this is a question on here. The person was asking you, how good was Latanya Polo? Like, I've seen oh. Latanya video, of course, because I'm a Long Beach alumni. And she's right. the greatest of us all, even though myself, Cindy Brown, Jackie White, second glow Charlie that went after Lynette. But when I see her highlight film, I mean, you know, she's the best to come out of Long Beach. And the question was, you, how good was the time? And you would know, because they had three pointers. She would just kill it right now. Right. They said she was a problem. She scored, what, 99 points overseas when you played? Look, something. Her and Joyce Walker. Oh, that's right, Joyce. That's right. Forgot about Joyce. Yeah. yeah. Look, they used to play against each other. I would go to the game. It would, <laughs> out. it would be a shootout. You'd be like, I don't know who's going to get the most points, but it's going to be a good game. Oh, Latanya Pollard was so assuming. She was so unassuming because you see her and she she wasn't fast. She Even with Latanya talking, she didn't talk that fast. But she just had this swag about her and she had her shot. And you know, it's like she would put you to sleep with the way she would shoot it. But she <laughs> was also good. She was also good. And she just she just could kill it. She would just kill it. Were... Latanya and Joyce. I mean, those were Joyce going to the basket and Latanya firing it from the three. Good game. Good game. Good game. That's entertainment, right? 
Oh gosh, I'm telling you, I went to the games. I'm like, I'm going to that game right there. So yeah, yeah it was great. You won the way too, the best player in college basketball. She's a Wade Trophy. Yeah, winner. yeah, that, yeah, yeah. She, that's yeah. look. That's my sister in the Wade Trophy. Yeah, we did that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm not you. <laughs> okay, Jess. I see how you slid that in there, but I'll play it. I was the Wade yeah. Trophy winner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, well, Mike Hoops wants to know who are your, your top five toughest players that you had to defend over, in, overall in your whole career. Oh, my gosh. You know, I would say one of the toughest would have been Kim Hampton because Kim was so – I mean, you get her on the low – if you let her get on the block, you're done okay. because she was so much – I mean, Kim, it wasn't like she was the smallest thing. And I was probably smaller than Kim. But when she got you down on the block, you were done. And she was skilled in her. Anybody that I talk about from back in the day, they were skilled. Anybody who we can say old school, they were good at what they did. Yeah. So I would definitely have to say Kim Hampton. Um, Lisa Ingram, like I said, Lisa, yeah, she, was a, she was a threat. You know, she, I mean, she was a triple threat. You, she'll take you out the three pointer. She'll get you down low, and if she ain't doing that, she's passing it. Okay. Uh, ended up having to guard some of you know. I ended up guarding some. Um, I was really a you know a post player, but I ended up guarding you know fours and fives. Whoever you know, whoever whoever came in. Um, Janet Harris was good. Janice, yeah, did right. you? Janet Harris, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I mean, I can name so many because we played against so many. I mean, so and Donovan, like, look, and Donovan was like 6'10. I mean, you, there was only so much you can do with arms and legs. I mean, you know what I'm saying? So, did you have to guard Medina? Um, no, I didn't have to guard Medina. But Medina was so good. Medina was, she was so, she was, you know, she was quick. She had her moves. Medina was good, but people don't know about Medina. Just like they you don't know? know about Tina Hutchison because she got hurt because Tina Hutchison was like the truth. Yes, yes. I mean, it was so much name and that you just, you know, you just, people are just not going to know. It. Yeah. I mean, and, and, and it's sad that people don't. I, I'll throw you a name, Valerie Walker. Oh yes, oh, yeah, Cheney. 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 Yeah, yeah. Right. And look at, and that's another thing, Janice, because you know what? And I'm gonna say this to all the people out there, and you talking to young players. There was no television, but I still knew about all of them. You right? That's right, Valerie Walker. And yes. you know, we played we played against Cheney State in the first NCAA championship. Right. Coach String. That's yeah. right. 82. Yes. 1982. Yeah. yeah. They. So, yeah. So, yeah. Only so, coach, I mean, coach String and the only coach to take three different teams to the final four. Look, I remember the first time I saw Coach String on the sideline. And, you know, you and, and I told you to walk. You know, she was always dressed sharp. And I had to stop and say, oh, my God. A black coach, a black female coach. Look at her. Dang. I mean, and she was just so sharp and she was just so composed. But the thing about Coach Stringer, I didn't see her for years and years and years. And she always had a positive word and a smile. Yes. And it, she's always had that. And I'm so glad that we can give her her flowers while she's here. Yes. Um, Yes. So, yeah. So there were so few short um um because the only other one I remember that I know about as far as being a black coach was um Coach Washington at Kansas. Right, at Kansas, right. Yes, yes, Coach Washington, yes. And Coach yes. Springer, I think that was it, wasn't it? Back then, yep. Back then, yes. Yep. Yeah, yeah. back then for sure, yeah. And so I mean, and you know what what I don't get. And I sit there and, you know, Penny, you had such, I was so proud of you uh, being with the, with um, the Sparks. 
And I'd be like, yeah, look at Penny, she handling that, you know. That's right. And I look, I look, and I'm like, look, hey, you look, I, I know Penny, look, I'm like, I know Penny, shoot, yeah, she's handling all that over there, you know. But what, <laughs> um, what, what gets me now is I sit there and I look, and all those girls that I've mentioned, and all of those that have, where are those, where are those players to be teaching these girls that we have now? That's right. You know, and you know, everybody say, well, you know, it's got to be a first of this and a first of that. And 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 that's great. But I want everybody, look, I want everybody to do what they want to do. I want to see everybody succeed. But I want if our if our ladies are supposed to be the best, mm -hmm. if Teresa Edwards is one of, is a you know a how many time Olympian. She's supposed to be the best. Why is she not coaching? Exactly. And, and where, are, where are all those players that were you know, the influencer for these players? Yeah, there was there were other players besides Dawn Staley that played. So where are those players to teach the younger girls to be those champions? I mean, you know what I'm saying? And love the game without getting something in return. Like, I don't have to have a Nike, but love the game. Because that's why I say I take my hat off to Las Vegas, Ace's um, owner, that he's right. reaching back as far as he can. And his whole staff, pretty mm -hmm. much, once he hired Natalie Williams as a GM, uh, are, are players that played in the league. You know, and I, and I, and August, I, is, August is the president. She didn't play in the league, but she still had a history of women's basketball. But he's well, actually playing homage to those those players and bringing them back. But you're right, and there should be a place for them. And you know, yeah. it's, that's the thing I always say. It's almost like these. I don't care. Like uh, these players are good, but it would it wouldn't have, it wouldn't even been a thought for WNBA if all you guys didn't do it well. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Yep. I I, and, I agree. And, and we have you we have um. Matter of fact, uh, Hoop Scoop mentions that about you know Teresa Edwards and how was it playing against her because she was one of the um, the the prime players back then, and so many teams are missing out on the knowledge and experience that those players had. And, and you know, it, it's different now than it was back then. Like you say, we didn't, we weren't playing for, we were playing for the love of the game. It wasn't for the money because we didn't make money like that. It was for the love of the game. And I think until it gets back to the love of the game, to get back to that level to where, you know, shoot, I'm going out there to play just because, you know, just because. It ain't because I'm being sponsored by Nike. We, we didn't know anything about that. We didn't know anything about being sponsored by Nike or the NILs that everybody is getting now. Is that going to better your game or is that going to take away from your game? Mm -hmm. Yeah, as soon as we, everybody goes, and I've seen players on teams, and I'm like, you know, and I don't care what anybody thinks out there, they garbage. But people put them on the team because they got, I don't know, 30,000 followers. But they're not gonna the thirty thousand followers ain't gonna win your championship, you know, forty thousand, hundred thousand, you know what I'm saying? It, should, it shouldn't be about the followers, and I know that it is because times have changed. It should be about your play and your play, and that's where I where that's where I come into I'm like oh, is your brand more important or is your game more important? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And me being a player. I always want your game to be more important than your brand because the thing about it is if you go out there and play back then i think it was more important of what other players thought about you more so than they could ever think about what that was our brand right when I, for people to say oh you know janice was one of the better players i couldn't ask for no more than that i wouldn't exactly. you know I, they're playing. We were just out there playing for the love of the game, and for a fellow player to say my name is being one of the one of the best players, mm -hmm. I couldn't ask for that. It's like the people choice. It's like not like the people's when your peers saying you're great. When your peers say you're great, then you've made it because it didn't matter about nobody else. Yeah, 
It didn't matter about nobody else. It's about what your peers thought about you back then, not about, oh, you got how many followers, but how many of your fellow players think that you tough? How many players right. going to say, well, I have to have a team. I want her on my team. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't play with you, and I said that about you all the time on this show, homie. Huh, yeah. I was like, you sure did. Like, I'd be like, I know y'all, I love my girl Lisa and all that, but I've seen it all with Janice. I mean, I could go Janice Ingham. I could go, because, I mean, it was like, it's the only reason the WNBA came into existence, because it was women were doing it well. It's almost a sin that it came so late. I, it, I, and, and that's true. I know they tried several times, but, you know, trial and error i guess it'll get you where you need to be um but you know i can sit here and say there were players before me who were who i learned from that were great players that didn't get a chance at all to even go overseas or even play in the nba you know Shaq came out with the movie with, about lucia harris i can remember sitting in my living room lucia harris is from mississippi and yeah. i can remember her playing on the olympic team and I was like, I want to do that. I had no idea about how. I didn't know. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to, <laughs> this was my thing. I'm going to go to Delta State. I'm going to play for, <laughs> I'm going to play for Margaret Way, right? That's right. I had, up. I had no idea. I didn't know anything about a scholarship. I didn't know anything about, but that was in my mind. And, you know, that comes from the adage, if you can see it, you can believe it. So, you can achieve it if you see it. And I didn't know how. I didn't think about it. But I wanted to play in the Olympics. And I wanted to go and play at Delta State. And I wanted to play for Margaret Wade. You had your dreams. I had my dreams. Had and dreams. I, didn't, I didn't get to Delta State. But I well, did I'll play in the Olympics. That's, that's and not I, bad. So I guess I got some of that accomplished. Absolutely. But, and so, yeah, yeah. I, I want to get back to uh, let you get off the hook from answering this question right yeah, here. Yeah, he's like, uh, yeah, who said like, hey, he has a hoop scoops question now? <laughs> yep, yeah, you funny. <laughs> okay, look, hoop scoop. Um, when Teresa Edwards played in the 84 Olympics, when I was there, um, Cooper wasn't on that team, and there were older players. And Teresa, Teresa was like our baby. So she was the youngest one on that team. So you had Kim Mulkey, you had um, Etheridge. So, okay. You had Pat Head Summit. Now, who you think was going to start? Or who did you, you, who did you think was going to play? So yes, Teresa got play in time, but she didn't get the play in time that Kim Mulkey and Etheridge got. Now, Etheridge, where did she go to college at? Did she go to Tennessee? Texas. Or did she come out of Texas? I think Tennessee, right? She, I think she came out of Texas. She came out of Texas. Kathy Edwards played the point in yeah, Texas. Yeah. Oh. And so, Kim Mulkey. Okay, so, and Teresa was, she was what, 18, 19? She was, she was probably younger than that. She was the youngest, she was the youngest one on our team. So, then after that, I didn't go back on the national teams after that. So I'm sure they were battling, but that's what great players do. They're going to go up against each other. And, you know, if people were to, if you were to ask people about me back then, there would probably be people who would say that they didn't like me because I didn't really, I didn't really talk to a lot of people. I'd go out there and play and I was going to, handle mine, but I don't think I was really that type of person that was always talking to people. So Teresa may say that they didn't like each other, but it was a more competitive probably than anything else. And when you're being competitive, we don't have to be friends. Yeah. And that's the way it was with a lot of us. We didn't have to be friends because when I'm going up against you, I'm trying to go out there and try to take your head off because I'm trying to win, and that's what yeah, it was about. I'm not about. going to dinner with you the night before. The night before no, I'm playing. That ain't happening. But while so. we out there on the floor, I can remember being in Italy where Valerie Steele, Andrea Lloyd, shoot, we weren't even shaking hands when we got to the circle. We were getting ready to do battle. <laughs> I, I can imagine that. 
Yeah. Look, after the game, mm -mm, we ain't even talking. What? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do play in Vicenza. Yes, there is a military base. And no, I'm not getting you any food off the base. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. I was, yes. <laughs> I can, I can sit here now and say, well, let them get some, some American food, Janice. Please let them get some look, food. Jesus. I can look back. I can look back now, and I can probably say that wasn't um, Christian-like or nice, but that's what I did. Okay. <laughs> okay. And I know she. I know we got that question up, which brings us to a great question. Like I'm hosting the show, but I'm not. <laughs> There's a question up there, even though I know they still want to know who's better, Cooper or Teresa. If you want to answer that, let me know before I answer my question. Ask my question. You have two different diff you have two different people, you have two different types of players. Right. And you can't you can't necessarily you can't necessarily say Cooper was better than Teresa. Teresa was better at some things than Cooper was. So you can just pick your, you, you know, you can you can pick your poison. But when you're talking about players from back in the day, they were great players. Mm -hmm. If you had to choose one, you'd be, you'd be looking at, okay, well, what does she do better than this person that I need on my team? You'd be great. You'd be good with either one of them. So I'm not dodging the question. <laughs> I am telling you the truth. So stop trying to say pour you ain't ball. Ball. You ain't ball. Ball. That's what he's trying to do. So stop it. And, see, and Cooper's a perfect example of the players here in America didn't know they like, oh, oh, who's this player coming to the WB killing? Coop's always been balling overseas. You know what I'm saying? She's yeah, always been balling. And She's then, always been. So when she got here, Coop was always the showman. But people were like, oh, my God. They had heard of Cheryl because, you know, television was on. But then here comes right. Coop winning all the MVPs. Right. And that's a perfect right. example of what we're saying, players that were great and we overseas and the better years were overseas before we got here. My question is, and there was a great question up here, and it's something that's happening right now. The question was up there to me and Ruthie, but how did you feel about, the question was like, were there fights in practice like what happened with Drayvon Green and Poole this week with that tape getting out? What's your thought on that? Because fights do happen, and the reality of it is they do happen sometimes. But what's your thought on that? Yes, they do happen sometimes. Um, but I don't think that it, I don't think I've been in a practice where it was as I thought I saw what happened with Draymond Green. I don't think it ever has escalated to that, that level, level that where level. somebody got knocked out. I mean, it's always been some pushing and some yelling, whatever, whatever, whatever. You know, you got to say your piece, you gotta whatever, whatever, whatever. Then you got a chance to go run it out after that. <laughs> Y'all going out there and run it out since y'all got some extra energy that you need to, you know, get rid of. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, go on out there and y'all work that out. Um, but I think with when you're being as competitive, I think that um, there's always going to be that because you're trying to, you're trying to, you know, you're trying to establish yourself. You're trying to, but I don't think that. Um, you should ever take it to the level that he did because what if somebody had gotten hurt? What if somebody had he had hit his head? He's a big guy too. Yes. Then yeah. you know, then what happens? You don't ever want to lose the respect of your teammates because your you know your teammates are your teammates. Those are the ones that you're going into battle with, and you always want you know yeah they always want that competitive side, but you don't ever want to cross that line to where you lose that respect of your teammate he could have right. broke his jaw you know he could have broken his jaw he could have hit him in a way that he fell hit his head how many times have you said somebody said oh i didn't mean to and they fell and they hit their head and they died right. he didn't mean to but that's what happened mm -hmm. so you just you know anger management um that discipline of where sometimes you just want to say some things you just want to go off you want and you can't and um and i know he understand i know he understands that and i know he feels bad about it but see that's just like words once that come out you can't pull it back in and now with social media see back in the day you probably could have done some things and i know some players have men and women that 
thank God we didn't have social media. We didn't have those phones that were always recording or, you know, and I'm sure if he could take it back, he would. Mm -hmm. Because I know in our practice, um, it's so it's so funny now because you know how like being a DM for 20 years, I got so many fond memories. I'm gonna tell you a lot of days, people didn't even know it, especially with the Sparks teams, that I would see better games at practice than I did in the game. Because sure, yeah. I'm gonna tell you right I'm now, there's right no now. Lisa Leslie without so tough, tough, tough D nasty. Because D nasty made Lisa get tough, you know, because D plays on a hundred percent every play and trust me like what you said the practice would get so heated and escalate to a level that michael cooper would be like water break water break and the place still going <laughs> right right in the place but, still going because like you say it's so competitive but i just never seen nobody um punch punches now i'll tell you i ain't gonna lie to you because lisa had her elbows and the lisa would be coming Girl, now you already know you already know me and Lisa almost got into it one time on the ESPN. Oh, I know one like, time she went there. <laughs> but. Remember in Cleveland? Remember in Cleveland? I think one of my years when, I think Lisa yeah. was to help you up. And, and it's that psychological thing where you hit her hand away like, girl, you better get on out of here. It was so. Uh, look, but the thing about it is those battles, you're making that other person, that the, the, the opponent is making you better and you're making them better. Whether mm -hmm. you want to realize it or not, and you you know that's what's the whole point. We pushed each other, yeah. um, because if you didn't bring your best, they weren't gonna bring their best. So you gonna go out there and kill them, and that was the thing. Right. We go out and we gonna bring our best, and everybody had to bring their best in order to be good. And that's what's that's the way it was back then. And mm -hmm. your teammates made you accountable. That was and now it's like. Uh, if yeah. I'm sorry, you can't say that's your to toughest me. competition. Don't say nothing to me. No, first of all, in our world, you ain't gonna be the star if we know the real deal on you already. You know what I'm saying? Right, mm -hmm. right, right. And practice you know, is where you make it, baby. They practice will make you or break you. That's right. Let You're me right tell you something. This is so funny. One day, I had this. I traded for. I'm not gonna say the player's name because y'all will get it. I know. Um, hype ball of hoops to go figure it out, a hoop nation. These I people will. are very knowledgeable, so I'm not giving you any backstory, but put it this way. One day we were in practice, and I was watching all the GM. This is my favorite story about one of my favorite stories about Lisa, <laughs> right? And um, she was balling in practice. Oh, the, the practice, it was so heated, and I had got this player. I'm not going to even tell you your name, but Oh my God, they hated each other already, but I'm like, this person help us win. I'm gonna get her, y'all figure it out, right? So it was so heated. And and I tell you, Cooper, blow the whistle or not, it just came street ball in the practice, right? So right? they keep playing. And it was so funny because one time it was so heated that Michael demanded a water a, a water break. And long story short, I went, whoa, Lisa. Another word to use. I went, whoa, Lisa. <laughs> What should I call you today? Right? <laughs> right? And Lisa go, Oh, call me Spoon, Penny. Call me, they call me PT, my play too. Call me, yeah. call me Spoon, PT. You call me, this Lisa, call me Spoon. And I'm sitting at the table going, Spoon? She went, Yeah, I'm serving these, you know what, up today. She said, I'm serving, like this. I'm serving their asses up today. It was so funny. <laughs> it was, and my thing was, when she said it, the player that I wanted to go at her, if I had her, you know, in your era, Jan, if you heard her say that, you would have went ham, hey, wouldn't you? Oh, girl, look, like, you don't even know. I was like, well, that's a little different, because that had been Lisa Wim Jones. The Lisa would have been like, are you serving up? Well, let's just go serve up, you know? No, we we going to make crazy. it fun today. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah it would have, we, we, everybody would have been running after that little shot. So yeah, so mm, yeah. like you said, the competitiveness, but, and it was so funny. She said, "Yeah, Penny, just called me Pete. You called me Spoon today. I'm shoving the asses up. It was so funny." And yeah. I bet it was, but it would be like, the yeah, yeah. Is like them were harder than the games. Yeah, but that's how like, it should be. That's how it should be. There though. was no one team that always stayed on one team. You mix it up. You get, you know, you get the good players going against each other. And you play now. Oh, don't go too hard. You need I need you for like you say for the game, or I need you for to do this. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's what you want. 
Look, I can tell ladies, you. ladies, I, I have this question, and they are killing me here if I don't get this up for you, Janice. They want to know about the 1983 USA Pan Am Games. We won, um, was it one of the best teams ever? Uh, in, any memories on the team? Um, you averaged 15 points. They know your stats and everything. So. I mean, like, team. Um, you know what? It was one of the best teams ever. Um, that team ended up going and playing in the, um, in the in 84 Olympics. And we were so deep and so good that you could put in five, you could take out five, and it still was going to it was still going to continue. We were so deep um and so talented. So yes, it was one of the I mean, yeah, we were probably one of the best teams there were. Oh, now yeah. I I could sit there and say, Well, there are some other people that I probably would have picked as far as um because I still, you know, I sit there in the 84 when we did the, you know, we did the trials. Back I'm then, you had, you had to play on the national team. You had to be on the net. You had to be on the. You had to be on the national team in order to be to try for the Olympic team or be considered for the Olympic team. But girl, I'm telling you, Georgine Wells, I was like <laughs> yeah, she because she was girl, on yeah, nice. yeah. I remember her. She was, she was killing. I'm like, surely she's going to be on the team, but she wasn't. I think that she should have been on that team, but she's a classical pianist too. I don't know if people know. I know people probably don't even know who she is, but like I said, first player to dunk in an official NCAA game. You can look that up. And yes. um, I was a roommate of a seat. She's a classical pianist too. I don't know if you knew that or not. I didn't know that. So, so why, got- why why do you think she didn't make that team then? Where did she play? Exactly. That's what I was gonna say. Okay. I mean that that answer. I mean, you know, they had some. That. I would agree with that. They had some girls on the team. I, like I didn't even know where they were from, but they were on the team. But I think back then it was a lot of um, where you played right. more so than what you what you've done. I mean that you know. Yeah. Look, we don't even want to go into that way, but well, yeah, probably, I mean, some players will probably say that now too, though. But yeah, you were speaking for that. Right. <laughs> yeah, so they, they, the, they conversation, the, the conversation we had about Gina Ariella and and the players on UConn. I mean, well, you know, UConn players are different. different. It's a little different, but I'm sure many people think just because you know. But back then, you know, you're gonna, look, you're gonna always have that. You're gonna always have that because, like Penny was alluding to earlier, how many followers did they have? Okay, well, we got to get them on there because you know yeah. now it's, it's just t- it's different, and it may not be. You know, I look at some of the girls and look. I I stopped away from basketball for 20 years after I stopped with the Cleveland Rockers. When I came back and I was looking at the Final Four, and I'm telling you, I'm so old school. Back in the day. They'd be like, oh, we're going out to play. What do we do? We just pulled that hair up in a ponytail. We went out there. We were going. The first mm-hmm. person I ever saw would pick up on when in the WNBA was, t- was Tina down in Houston. You were like, damn, Tina got lipstick. Yeah, I was like, damn, she got lipstick. Nobody else was wearing that because it was like, shoot, what's going on out there? Let's get this done, you know? And so I looked at when I was looking at the Final Four a couple of years ago, I looked out there and some of these girls had on eyelashes. I'm like, <laughs> hair down all the way down the back. Yes. Yeah. Hair and hair. <laughs> and I, I had to get on the phone. I'm like, uh, excuse me, what is this? What is going <laughs> on? Because I can tell you, had that been back in the day, it would have been like, girl, if you don't take them things off your <laughs> eyes, so you can see where we, what you need to be passing the ball to. I mean, you know. I don't, and that's when we go back again. Your brand, your game. And maybe it's I'm just too old. To, oh. It's kind of because it's funny because sometimes when I watch um, Brianna Stewart, Brianna Stewart is real old school. She let her game do mm-hmm. all the talking for her. You know what I'm saying? You and know, that's all you have? A quiet 30. She'll have 30, and you look up, man, she got 30 already. Right. You know? And, and you know. And that's the thing. This is, and I think that was the thing back then. We didn't have a whole bunch of um, talking. People didn't really talk. 
but the thing about it is they let their game speak for themselves. Absolutely. And that's where it always that's where it always come into play. All you have to do is be your best. You go out and do your best, it'll speak for itself. Mm-hmm. And that was that was that was the old school players. True, true that. Yeah. You know, we have a couple more questions because we we know it's kind of getting late for you, but um, it was one question in particular. Well, why she looking at that, um, yeah, Janet? Yeah. You know who else I thought was a really good guard, and I believe you played against him, um, Jung Lee, who played in oh, yeah. Louisiana. Yeah, you know she was right down the road, and then you 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 put you put her together with Lisa Ingram. Yeah, they were tough, weren't they? They were tough. They they were tough, but I tell you what, see, since they were right down the they were right down the road, and we played Louisiana Tech, Louisiana Tech played Northeast. They can't come up in our house and win, girl. No, <laughs> they were good. Exactly, exactly. Oh so, no, uh uh-uh. uh. So they exactly. were good. us at Louis. They did not beat Louisiana. <laughs> When I was there, absolutely. Um, so this question was from Tanya. I knew I was looking for her earlier. Um, <clears throat> she was saying, uh, talking about Janice Walker and Pollard on the A14. Remember Penny, Tina Hutchinson? They messed up the paperwork. I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I know about Latanya. I asked Latanya because Latanya was great. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, and I and I, I know Latanya told me she had got injured, but she thought she was well enough to go. And she says something that Pat told her, well, I don't want to take a wounded soldier into a war. You know. That sounds like Yeah, that's yeah. not about and, like that. And, and, and Latanya was like, I was well enough to go. So I guess it just goes back to like what you said. It just depends on, you know, because she should have been on that 80. Because I, I was, I mean, she won the way, you know. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And and if you've won the way, you won the pinnacle. So therefore you should be. You know they have 14 players better than you. Right. So um mm, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's Pat. What else can be said? I mean, she made those Joyce was legit too. Yeah. Joyce, Joyce was legit. Um but where did George play? LSU. <laughs> go go back to that, right? I mean, so, I mean, she, she was legit, but she, we had two players. You had Kim and you had Etheridge. Mm-hmm. You had Teresa Edward. Okay, where were you going to put Joyce? Yeah. Yeah, that's a tough one. Definitely. Anyway, we, we Candace Parker. Yeah, Candace Parker. Um, fans want to know your thoughts on her and just the impact that she's had on the game currently. You know, the I last think, few years that she's done. I think she's had a great impact on the game. I mean, I think she's come out. I think she's done a great job. Um, I mean, you know, she's come out and she and she's been solid. You know, a lot of times people want to write them off after you get some new people in and be whatever, whatever. But what did she do? She still came out and handled her business. So mm-hmm. she's she's a good player. She's been a great ambassador for the game. Um, what she was on she was on uh, the two K. Can't ask for no more than that. Yeah, so first. yeah, you don't you don't you don't ever want to sit there and be like, oh well, we got new blood. Kick somebody to the curb because she still paved. She was still paving the way. We may have started it, but she's still continuing it. So you can't ask for no more than that. Absolutely. Yeah, that's why I think Asia Wilson now, not because they want a championship, because Asia I think is a is a nice ambassador too, because Asia kind of goes about her business quiet and stuff. And I think like it's no surprise when I was on Instagram and I saw she uh, won a world championship, uh, NCAA championship, and now you know she has a WNBA championship FIBA, FIBA Cup. and all those things. I literally believe when people would ask him, where is the torch going to be passed? You know, because I also think she got that that great pedigree, too, along with Stuart. You know, obviously, I'm proud of Chelsea. Um, but Asia, I think, is going to be a, a, a super ambassador for the league as well. 
Absolutely. I mean, she has that great energy. She has that phenomenal energy. She's just and she's a team you know, player. Like right. and team player for sure. And, and works right. hard. That's what I always suspected about people like like that they, you know, you it's like what you said, Janice. You know, you can have a lot of great players, but how many work? And that's what I loved about Maya. Maya, even though a lot of people have forgotten about her or don't talk about her as much. As far as I'm saying, Maya is one of the pinnacles. She's mm -hmm. probably one of the only players that came in, and when I say live up to her potential, not one year here or in between, Maya won right. the eight straight championships. Yes. Yeah. One one every I mean, every other year. And if she kept playing, she might have been the most decorated player if she had a kept playing. You know, but probably. I loved her game because she was coachable, teachable. Yes. And even though we yeah. were her big, you know, that was one of our biggest rivalries. I loved right. her because she never had to wonder if she was gonna show up. She always showed up, she always played hard, she was coachable, and you knew you had a chance. And that's where I'm I fall to your side, Janice, in terms of consistency. Not one right. year and people think you're great. That's what I want to see what Asia does. This next year coming up, far as the hunger and things like that, not that one year great, the next year not, and this and that, and that's what I feel fools the public a lot. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Where it's about how many years can you do it in a row? When I say in a row, you don't have to win it, but be there. You know what I'm saying? That's why I'm not you look to Stubers, you're dying. I mean, Maya, I think you know might be the only player. Well, maybe with Simone, because I think Simone was on that team with her. Mm -hmm. And I think Rebecca, I think you came after, you know, see, um, San Antonio went down. From eight, right. eight, you know, the expectation was to be great. And she competed for eight titles. Eight. You know, Maya was so different. Um, she was always positive. She was always out yes. there working. She didn't say a whole bunch, but you can sit there and be like, yeah, she's a good player. I mean, she was always there. She was always in it. She, she was, she was always in it. I would love for her to be able to come back and um, be be in the game. Be in the league. After yes, the game. I think I think I think she'd be great for it. I mean, yeah, she's been gone, but what she did, I mean, you know, had she walked away on her terms, she walked yes. away to do what she wanted to do. Yeah. Had she yeah. stayed, it's. It's it's no telling what she could have done, yeah. but um, I heard that she's happy, and that's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. Her and Deanna Nolan, people don't get it. Like far as that, oh, yeah. Deanna, Deanna, yeah. Deanna Nolan was one of the best to ever lace up a pair of shoes. Another one, yeah. That yes, yes. But the thing about it is, we can go back and we can keep thinking about all these players, and we can keep coming up with these with with all these names, you know. Bridget Pettis, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, we we can we can just keep talking about, and we'll come up, we'll we'll keep throwing out names, and people will be like, "What did they do?" And see, and I even think, and this may be biased what I'm about to say, and we can get to that question next, Rita. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna tell you right now, Mawadi Mabika was one of the best guards I ever seen play, oh, and yeah. I played with, and I was a manager. Why yes. would be like quickly when they talking all that knick knack patty wag? Why would be like I don't care? I you come and play, you can play or you know come play. Right, right. You just want to play and win. One of the best to rise up on you, and I mean the bigger the light, the better Mawadi Mabika got. You know. Yes. And, yes. and I know there's, that because I had to guard her too. There's there's just so many. There's just so many. So yeah, it yeah. There are just so many so good players. What would you call your younger self right there, Janice? Um, what would I tell my younger self? Yep. Whether in basketball or in life or both. You know, I, I would basically say, you know, trust the process. I can remember being at Louisiana Tech and Coach Bormore was having his speech. And, you know, he, we have – we have been beaten to death. I mean, we just have had the hardest practice. And he says, these four years are going to be the best four years of your life. And, you know, being your younger self, you sitting there like, yeah, right. You know right. what? Those were the best four years of my life because you know why? 
All I had to do was go to school and play ball. I didn't have any other responsibilities. I had no other responsibilities. That's all I had to do. That was all that was required. Those were the best four years of my life. They were. So, and I mean, if you look back on your four years, Penny, in college, you'd be like, well, yeah, they probably yes, were, were, you know? Yeah. Yes, so. they were. And college is fun, you know? That's why I used to like to go watch college. I always say, that's kind of like why I hate when people jump out of college, to be honest with oh, you. God. Now, if we yes. had the number one pick, I wish, you know. But it's like, it's your last round of innocent basketball. And the NIL yes. is about to take all that away. It's, it's needed. The, the NIL is needed because players should be getting paid for all the work they do. But now right. it's there. You know, now it's going to go to high school. That's your last, well, maybe not even in high school for men. It was your last pure enjoyment of ball where you yes. playing for the love of the game. Yeah. Um, so you know what I'm saying? No That's other motivation. To watch it. Yeah. No I, other motivation. I, I, I I don't I know that it's needed because I can remember times when we we're sitting there like uh we're hungry and we don't have any <laughs> you know? okay, and you know yeah. you're like, you gotta call on somebody but yes it's needed I can only hope that it just doesn't get out of hand where you can't the kids, that. I think it's the about kids, they they're not jaded and they think that the only thing about it is uh, it's about the money. And and it's not about the money all the time. It's about it's a it, maybe we were just maybe we were just so innocent about it that it was just about the love of the game. Maybe that's maybe that's what it was. We were just innocent and we just wanted to play because we could, because we wanted to be better, because it was fun. Because mm -hmm. you know what I always thought too? I said, we're always going to win the Olympics. And that may be sure. biased, me being an American, you know. Right. But I, I guess so. we're always going to win the Olympics because the women's team, I'm talking about specifically, because right. we play for the love of the game. Because you notice right. how overseas, Janice, when their foreigners get 27, 28, they old. And their game has gone downhill. I thought it's because they paid them when they were 14 or 15. Where yeah. us, we're just getting out of college and now sitting on that greatness where we can play to we in our late 30s, you know? Yeah. And that's why yeah. I said we're always going to win it because they've been playing for money because they don't have high school games so long. Right. You got to be True. here. You got to do this. You got to practice. Yeah. That they were already old when we were just sitting outside at 27, 28, 20. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be interesting yeah. to see those dynamics. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. As this NIL um, plays into they are going to have to try to figure out something because your big school is going to have a serious event. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know your your HBCUs they're going to they're going to be in trouble because who I mean they're not being good money. Marketed. They're not being marketed like that. And you know a lot of times it's who are you going to see on TV? They're going to put those people who got those followers. They're going to put, they're going to, Gina go always have a place. You know what I'm saying? So um, hopefully, you know, we can get people in that um, are good players and not because they had so many followers that they got NIL money. But I think some of the HBCUs are, you know, now um, bringing in some of the players, like the players are realizing what's going on and are saying, let me stick here and, and help in this situation or just, you know, have a different experience than always going to one of the majors. You know, yeah, it is about money, but then, you know, you know, other things come about with it as well. So, well, true. I don't think... I See, you know, I remember they were having a debate about uh, players jumping just to be on a super squad. Right. I like that back in the day. We go stay where we are. We go try to kill you. That's what we're going to try to do. It wasn't about getting on the team just to have this super squad. We go right. kill you with what we, you know, we go work hard to try to get you. That's what we're going to, you know, we're going to try to do. And um, yes, MIL, the, the NILs, yes, the money is needed. Mm -hmm. But 
I just don't want to see where it becomes more about the money and not about the love of the game. And see, and this is where I thought that NCAA, who's going to be in a ballisman in, in another two years, could have been forward thinking and figured mm. out a formula that you can pay everybody, you know, the the money to keep it on a level playing field. Because I don't care what anybody say that, and I'm selling this from a pro perspective. That's going to be hard to manage. You cannot manage that, and especially no. when I see some of the college I was talking to an agent about a week ago. He's like, oh, Penny, you got to see it now. This big school, they're even paying players. I'm telling you, he was talking about a football player that why they're recruiting them. Hey, we stay two years, you get this million dollar bonus because this player yeah. is going to be probably a one and done. You know what I'm saying? Right. And right. that's why I say it's hard to regulate those rules when, you know, I mean, now the boosters can go wild. If I own a car well, dealership, here's money for you. You know right. what I'm Yep. Well, you see that you saw that Bronny James just got his that got that Nike contract. Yeah. What did he get? No, I didn't. I missed that's that. Ridiculous. Yeah, I, I don't know how much he got, but I'm sure it wasn't two hundred and fifty dollars yeah. or two hundred and fifty thousand. I'm sure yeah, he got paid. That just happened years. yesterday, right? Yeah, it just yeah, it just it's happened. happened so, right. Yeah, eighteen. What was it? It's his eighteenth birthday. Yep. For his. Wow. So, well, he got the crazy. Nike. Because you know his dad is with Nike, so yeah, he got he got the deal. So yeah, definitely. they're like he's a, they're like he's a millionaire and he's still in high school. I know. <laughs> and look about the, look at the basketball players that they paying claim to sit out and go and work in this performance facility and then enter the draft as opposed to going to college where they think they don't want them to get hurt. And they paying them players a million dollars, you know, to sit but, out and then come in the draft. You're paying somebody a million dollars that you don't even know it's going to be a bust or not because they haven't earned. They Just think if you were able to go back and skip over four years of college and then say, I'm going overseas because they didn't have a WNBA. I'm going to go overseas and play. What mm -hmm. do you think that you would have been like without those four years that you earned your stripes because you had to get it through practice against those people who was trying to get a same spot that made you better. Yeah. Yeah. You feel so. everything's gonna change, you know. It's it's just look at look at where we've come from and where we are now. So you know it's it's, it's definitely gonna just flip another time, you know. And that's true. Change is good. I'm not saying change is not, but don't ever lose the love of the game. That's exactly, exactly. And on that note, I want to say the love of the game has been evident tonight by all the questions that have been up. Um, Ron Ron Charles, especially, you know, he's he's talking about why he loves the Levens. Hoop Scoop always puts up stuff about the legends. You know, you have a lot of loyal followers yeah. and fans here for you and for other women of the game that like they know their stuff. So we appreciate you, Ron, Ron Charles and Hoop Scoop and all the others that tune in every night to be a part of the show. We're going to um, close out, but we cannot close out without a special salute to someone who is a part of us um, by the name of Savannah Hamilton. I'll put her up so you get a chance to see what she looks like. But Savannah was just um, selected to work with a new network, sports network. Uh, she was with NBA television, but now she's taking another step forward and uh, I believe has a, a totally awesome contract. So we just want to shout her out because she's a part of our team. Uh, wish her well. Hit her up on her Facebook, her Instagram. I mean, she's all over everything as well. And lastly, a shout out to St. John's University, where I attended. Um, they actually have an open practice um, Saturday the 15th. Come out, bring your high school players out, those who are interested in, in learning about the next level of basketball and support them. But come learn, have a conversation, and um, be a part of their special day. Penny, you have any closing words for me? Yeah, for all y'all out there that's not on certified script, um, scripted, certified unscripted, yes, I got my questions in. And I love Janice just as much as you do, Ron, yes, Ron, right. Charles. Leave us alone. <laughs> and Janice, I just want to say on a serious note, thanks for coming on the show. 
you know, you want everybody's favorite. Um, I love, I love our show for this reason right here that we get to reconnect and and go back and touch people such as yourself. Um, I love going down memory lane, memory lane. So thank you for coming on the show. You've always been one of my favorites. You know, competing like you say, I can't tell you that, but you always been. But you've always just been one of my favorite players. You know what? Thank you all. Thank you all for having me and Penny. You know, you've always been one of my favorite people. And I tell you, I couldn't have been more proud when I could sit there and say, I know Penny yet. Oh, yeah, she's yeah, she's, she's running over there at the Sparks and everything. So and I know that you landed on your feet and, you know, you got my number. Stay in contact. And thank you all so much for having me. Oh, thank you for coming on. Tune in to us next week. We're looking at possibly Katie Smith. Um, who else might we have? Lynette. Hey, you know what? I, I want to reach out to Michael Lynette. Cooper too. We want. I want to get some men on here. I want yeah, Michael yeah, yeah. Cooper. Okay, Let, let's let's do that. But we're, we're going to kind of keep it up in the air for you next week. We're just going to have to have y'all tune in and see who's coming on, or just check our page during the course of the week. But we That's genuinely true. thank you for tuning in, Miss Lawrence. Namaste, much blessings, much love to you, and we genuinely appreciate you being a part of our show tonight. All right, we Thank are you. certified unscripted. We are new to this. We are what? We're not true to this. We knew to this because Bill no. would kill me if I didn't correct it. <laughs> no, we're not we are true. Not true to this. We're new to this. this. We're certified, certified unscripted. <laughs> we, we got that part right. <laughs> Thanks, Janice. Love you much. Thank you. Love you more. Love right, you guys. Later, Penny. And later, see you guys. <laughs> see you later. Bye bye.